Hello guys, my name is Armin. In today's episode, Learning SketchUp, I wanna show you how to group items. I wanna show you a little bit differences between the group and component. And also I wanna show you how to group the objects and how to explode them, how to put them on tag, how to change, rotate the axis inside, and a few more tips and tricks of using groups. Without further ado, let's jump into SketchUp. So in today's video, I want to talk about a very important topic. I want to talk about grouping. So there's always this conversation between, you know, how I'm going to use the grouping or component, vice versa, like which one to use. Um, so what, what I'm suggesting, if you are dealing with the repeatable items, um, such as columns, beams, windows, doors, anything that is the same in a model. And when you want to make change to one, everything should be changed. Use component. Otherwise, group every single geometry that you have and make them an object. Um, grouping helps your modeling uh, to be organized. Uh, and then it's going to basically help you down the way. So the rule of thumb is any object or geometry or thing that you want to create you need to group it put it on the layer if you don't do that the problem with sketchup is um let me show you something so um the problem with sketchup is if you if you move stuff uh you know like basically um items they kind of stick to the glue that's why like you have an option um in like component or the other command and say unglue it, glue it. So by default, if you do not have a grouped items, everything is gonna stick. And then when you have a large project and complex project, every line is gonna connect. You have a lot of line that you need to delete. And at the end of the day, you spend days creating a model and you have a problem. So my recommendation, make sure you use component and group uh, on every single item that you create. So if you create an item, it's not a group and it's not a component or something wrong. Let's just put it that way. Um, so what I'm going to do right here, I want to show you um, just a few items on the grouping, which is really, really easy. But I want you to kind of understand the concept behind it. So to in, in order to create a group, you can kind of triple click uh select all and then right click i know we went for component uh, we had another video talked about the component you can kind of click on this but right now i just want to create a group and that's it my group is created and if you want to put it on tags you can you know, basically just come here and say box and then come over there align it to box so i can turn them on and off easily um, the good thing about group is right now if i move this around and i place it back over here and move it back on it's not going to stick to it because this is one unified model uh, and this is just a separate basically geometry as a surface a line and everything so if you want to turn this into a group you can do the same thing. So basically you select all or you want to double click all, uh, make a group, that's going to be another group. So right now I have, let's just click another one, let's call it cylinder, and then select this guy, put it on this. So right now I can turn stuff on and off, right? Um, the main thing that is really important is you can create group within group. So if you have multiple objects and you basically you want to be, turn some stuff on and off, you can create. And then if you pay attention, there's going to be a blue line um, around each item that you create a group for. Um, they call it like a container line or outline, whatever you want to call it. But all of these blue lines basically tells you how that model created. And and what is basically based on the X, Y, and Z axis. And if I go and adjust the scale and you can see I have the handles on all the side to kind of move stuff on and off uh, or, you know, make them smaller or bigger. Let's just double check the cylinder as well. So if I go to scale, do the same thing. If I want to go to rotate, I can select on one corner, another one, I can kind of move them around or you know, just going to do everything that you have right here on it um, with the grouping. 
And the main thing is if you want to go to the move tool, um, you can click on any of these, uh, looks like a plus sign. It basically gives you an option to rotate that object alongside that uh, axis. So this is very important to know that how you can use it. But in order to edit a group, you need to double click and go inside the group. And that's a good thing about it. So if you have a complex project with a lot of objects group, if you want to make change, you go inside the group. And then even if you mess up one of the object, it's not going to affect the whole project and the model that you have. So it's basically is this one. So you can see the hash line all around, like, like a dash line, basically just or dot line around this. So this is your container. This is the actual model. So if I kind of go over here, uh, let me select this guy and move it. I want to show you something is going to happen. As soon as I move, the outline is the same, aligning with your global X, Y, and Z, but your actual object is moved inside. So right now, if I click on it, you see what I'm talking about, right? So you have X, Y, and Z because this is the point, the pivot point for the model that we created. This is going to be the global. And how, how do I know that? When I double click, I can see this X, Y, and Z basically for the model, right? It's in there. Same thing for this guy. So you can see basically I have X, Y, and Z. That's why these container or dotted line created around it. And if I want to move this or basically do it in a different angle, this is going to stay the same only the model is going to change. So how do you want to do align this with this, right? So I think we reviewed this and when we kind of work with axis right here, right? So if I click on the axis and I want to align it this way, so I want to go this, go this. So right now you see basically I'm aligning the line, the global to my model. So as soon as I do that, you see how this is changed. So let me just use control Z. So the original way that I created, this is my kind of global axis. This is what SketchUp has. So every single object that you group is going to be aligned with this. If you are changing the inside the actual object, it's going to move. But when I double click inside, it's still showing me the original um, basically just the original axis. And the problem with this is when I go to, let's say, scale something, you see it's not basically give me all the handles around it properly placed in four corners. So in order to resolve that issue, you need to change the axis in your grouped model. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go inside one more time, select my axes, put this one this way, this one this way, and then you can see it's going to be aligned right now and easily I have handles and all the corners and all the areas to put stuff together. So just pay the attention to the little detail that's going to help you out a lot um, when you are basically creating your group. Um, the other thing is uh, right now we have two groups you can create group within group. So if I select these two guys and just group them, I can make these groups. So you can see I have a line around this, line around the cylinder, and then a big box around this. So right now, if I double click inside, I still have those two group, right? So right now I'm just inside the first group. If I want to do only affect this one I double click here you can see that's grayed out I, I can make changes only let's say just I don't know push this one just a bit down and then like put another hole like next to this or something get rid of it for example so right now I'm just only made changes to this guy right and the good thing about this way working group within group if I copy and paste this and just put it next to next to it this way so right now if i want to only make changes to this guy i can go inside let's say delete this i only have this i only have that one and you can kind of turn stuff on and off without kind of changing the distance if you have two different objects to have a certain shape or certain distance uh, from each other 
you can basically kind of play this way create a group put them inside a group um, so just to recap real quick on this video I think it's a very important one but actually simple um, make sure every object that you create which is going to be line and surfaces group or component if it's repeatable make sure you put it on a component so you can make change to one everything is gets affected if you do not have that one and it's a unique just use the grouping one caveat here um, when you create a group if you have a lot of groups in your model it basically uh, makes your file bigger it's going to be really hard to open the sketchup model and it keeps crashing when you open it uh, because when you create a component the only file size is going to be the, the component the first one that you create and the other ones is not going to be extra data or extra, extra uh, object it's going to be just a copy of those but when you create a group each group is going to be a new object that's going to be added to the file so it's going to make this uh, the file size bigger and ultimately it's going to crash your sketchup so if you have let's say a building with a lot of scaffolding around it don't make all of those scaffolding groups make a component of them so you can kind of put them next to other because if you make them a group it's going to make your model really big and it's gonna crash anytime you open it. If you have slabs, lo lo lots of columns, beams. So make sure all of those are components, not groups, because it's gonna be repeatable items. You don't wanna make your SketchUp. So these little tips and tricks, you can use it to make your file size smaller. It's not gonna crash on any time, and it's gonna be easier when you go in there and adjust your items. Um, hoping that I was able to add um, another tips and tricks to your toolbox guys um, thank you for watching please make sure you subscribe and leave a like if you like the video and I'll see you in the next video